your price is too high. Stay chill. I'll teach you how to respond to that. Creative Souls. This is Madani from Feltastudio.com and today's video is about how to negotiate pricing with your clients. And these techniques I'm sharing with you worked wonders for me when I was a freelancer and today as a branding studio owner. I spent over 10 years negotiating with all type of clients. And trust me, the last technique that I'm gonna show you to you is the one that I use the most. Negotiating price isn't really about money. It's all about you and your clients feel like you both got a fair deal. And believe it or not, people will negotiate even if you offer the job for free. It's, it's, it's just how, how our minds are wired. We are like that, don't be offended. Back in the days I lived in a small town in Africa we had like a weekly market, like a big free shop that everyone visit. And kid you not, this is a true story. One of my friends worked there. A woman was negotiating a one dollar dress and she insisted on, no, I want to buy it like for, I don't know, half the price or I don't know what was like her deal and what she wanted. He was like, hey, take it for free. I'm not gonna uh, sell it to you. Just get off my face. And he was like, so angry, you know. Guess what? She was like, this one has better buttons. Can I take them both? Long story short, she took them both like for one dollar. I just wanted to show you that people will negotiate even if it's free. So be prepared to any negotiation. All right, let's get to the good stuff. So the trick number one is called the fridge. This one is classic. So it plays on the psychology of cheap and expensive. When a client says something like it's too expensive, don't get offended and just ask, how do you know it's expensive because you don't really know if something is cheap or expensive before buying it if your fridge costs 300 dollars and lasts for 20 years that's cheap if that fridge breaks after one week that 300 dollars feels pretty expensive so when a client say that the price is too high i just say we have the quality of 20 years fridge but this argument only works if your quality is top notch otherwise your stupid ass will lose the client so make sure your quality is top notch higher so after explaining why you cannot judge if the price is high or low we go to step two which is profiling mode and it's my favorite one if your client it's a huge player and has a big network that's a challenging client to negotiate with. Why is that? Because your client is the badass. And remember, when it's time for negotiation, you better be the upper hand, okay? You better be the badass. Otherwise, you will not have a successful negotiation. So, how to win such negotiation? Just turn the table. If I'm giving you 30% of my money, what I'm getting in return? What's worth 30% of my cash and just watch the magic happen Abra Kadabra. they might offer you collaboration royalty stocks um, sometimes a long-term contract or partnership but my favorite is referral why is that because working with them means everyone else will trust you and your brand will be built on a word of mouth of big companies big brands big names and trust me this is smart this is growth hacking now small businesses or startup they always on a budget and on the other hand they need branding a lot they need my services a lot because they need to stand out okay and you stand out with branding that's a different situation my question will be what's your budget and how we can work around it okay so you get most of our services and we get most of the deal so we go publicly together or we like have our signature on your website like branded by Felta Studio. This is how we make a fair deal for both of us. Otherwise, we are losers in this negotiation. And to be honest, we often cut our profits for this kind of client, mainly for two reasons. Reason one is that we can go crazy on the branding because we're building from scratch. So we can do whatever shit we want. And this is important to stand out. You need to be as crazy as possible. As I always say, you need to be as crazy and weird as possible in branding especially. But with big clients, you have like 
problem because customers already knew this client and the identity so you gotta be careful so much careful and for that I give you the best example the rebranding of LG amazingly done but for small Kickstarter or, or startups you are creating something new so you can be as crazy as possible and this is one of the reasons why we cut our profits here because we want to be crazy right the second reason is a long-term investment so when you do branding for small you know businesses we have a formula okay for that you mix Pelta branding plus big marketing plus good product I'm not saying it's high quality no no just a good product you've got the recipe for a long-term success my friend and by the way if you need any logo design or branding you just head to feltastudio.com and hire on a monthly basis a group of designers to help you build a unique and a one-of-a-kind brand identity and yeah if we genuinely believe that that small business is going international one day that's a fucking long-term investment we would be happy to invest and now about bad clients you can smell them from the beginning at least i can bad clients so bad clients don't value your service and only think about their needs just like a toxic partner in your life just like that they do not give a shit or a damn about your needs they're selfish like they are they like they are toxic partner so when they tell me your price is too high my answer is your budget is too low and direct them to hire a cheaper you know agency or a freelancer on fiverr or upwork or any facebook groups so this is how i was dealing with bad clients you know but today is different i've successfully converted so many bad clients into happy and satisfied ones and that's my friend the title of the next video so subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss it <laughs> Only one dollar, the three, okay, the three. Say yes, say yes. <laughs>